In this uh, session, let me uh, try out uh, a brief overview of the over-the-counter markets. We need to understand that majority of the derivatives or all the derivative instruments that are there, they are either traded over the exchange or they are traded privately between two parties and whatever the deals that are traded privately between the two parties is what we call as the over-the-counter market where there is a central marketplace where the buyers and sellers get uh, into uh, deals we call it as an exchange traded market and where we see uh, the two parties negotiating the transactions for a future buying and selling of uh, an, an asset for a price that is agreed upon today is what we are calling as an over-the-counter. So, out of the four derivatives that we are aware of, the futures, for sure, it happens only on the exchange. Futures trading is a pure exchange traded. Whereas, options, we see that some of them are traded on the exchange whereas majority of them are traded over the counter and the other two instruments generally the forwards and swaps these two are only over the counter which means the market uh, the OTC market is a very large market so we need to have a good understanding of this over the counter market so, on a broader basis, we see that it, these kind of transactions are basically uh, uh, customized between two parties, which means they are not standardized, just like futures, uh, uh, as opposed to futures, because futures are standardized. So, these are customized between the two parties. Mostly it is a deal between the two parties, whereas in some cases there could be a kind of intermediary who is uh, facilitating the transaction, identifying the buyer and the seller. But otherwise, the negotiation is always between the two parties, generally over the telephone, no physical uh, exchange. And major participants in this OTC markets are the different kinds of banks across the world. So, good number of uh, financial uh, uh, derivatives are traded over the counter by many investment banks. Major, major, majorly, as I said, the swap market, very heavily traded uh, market and uh, probably in the forwards, especially the currency market is a very heavy market. So, the swap as well as the forward currency uh, market, they are very heavily uh, loaded uh, OTC uh, markets. And uh, what we typically uh, see is all these investment banks, they create good number of new derivatives. They innovate the derivative products. They innovate the derivative products which would typically suit the needs of the client. Right, huge, huge innovations, engineering of the new products come out to meet the needs of the client. And because most of the deals are between the two parties, there is no big mark, secondary market for the same, which means they are very less liquid. In case I want to exit out of the contract, I cannot sell it to someone else. I have to negotiate with my other party and then only we will, uh, uh, we can uh, uh, get out of the contract. So, they are very less liquid and the transparency is much, much lesser in them because it's a kind of a deal that runs between the two parties. So, the transparency uh, of the deal may not be, uh, uh, may not be as much effective and efficient as it comes out in an exchange traded market. And even the credit risk, one party defaulting is also much, much higher compared to an exchange. Because in case of exchange, uh, 
there is a possibility of a margin there is a possibility of price limits there is a possibility of uh, 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 various other risk management activities taken up by the uh, uh, by the exchange or the clearing house of the exchange to minimize the credit risk but here because of the deal between the two parties the chances of credit risk are much much higher so there are so many uh, innovative uh, instruments that are uh, created on the top on the exchanges different kinds of options we call regular options are dealt over the exchange but what we see is some kind of exotic option which are not that regular which are tailor made to suit the needs of the different uh, participants they are primarily done over the counter itself and uh, we we already uh, talked about the forwards just as a definition of a forward market it's again it's a derivative so when i say derivative buy or sell something future date the price is agreed upon today but this particular deal this particular deal if it happens between the two parties where it's customized the quantity the quality the date it's not a delivery month any date can be uh, specified between the two parties so everything is more and more specific and the deal is entered in between the two parties we call it as a forward market so it's a very simplified version of the futures market and uh, uh, what we typically uh, see is uh, it can even the forward can typically happen on any of the underlying assets similarly uh, another uh, heavily uh, traded uh, instrument on the uh, over the counter is the swap so basically in case of swap again it's a kind of a deal for the future transaction between uh, two parties the two parties get into a swap uh, uh, contract wherein they exchange they swap the cash flows they exchange the payments at regular intervals so the deal is done once but the exchange of the payment happens more than once so probably it could happen that they get into a two year swap contract they get into a two year swap contract but uh, the payments are exchanged every quarter so in total there are actually eight payments because every quarter they exchange and they have struck the contract for two years and the payments typically uh, go based on the formula which is decided at the beginning of the contract itself and uh, generally uh, what we see in the market though there are varieties of swaps as a as a basic uh, interest what we could look at is the interest rate swaps are very commonly traded instruments so where uh, a agrees to pay to b interest on some formal some basis whereas b agrees to pay the interest on some other basis probably it may be like a says i will pay you a fixed 8% interest on some notional amount whereas b may say i'll pay you the floating rate uh, whatever would be the interest rate that is prevailing in the market at that particular point in time so these two are exchanging the cash flows based on a predetermined formula that is uh, uh, that is uh, agreed upon at the beginning of the contract itself so both of them are making some kind of payment exchanges similarly uh, apart from interest rate swaps we see that currency swaps are also more popular in the market a agrees to pay uh, uh, some amount in dollars b agrees to pay a some amount equivalent amount in rupees so depending on how the exchange rate is changing either a may be benefited or b may be benefited so a swap is a kind of an agreement between these two parties wherein both of them are exchanging the cash flows based on a predefined agreement and the agreement uh, which is the term of the swap generally uh, could be a, 
anything up to 2 to 10 years in general but in some cases we could see even a 20 year kind of swaps also or even more because they are all customized they can very well be uh, created between the two parties and uh, one more apart from the traditional we see some more uh, innovative products probably there could be a, a, a better version of a swap which is like a, a guaranteed equity kind of a product what is this guaranteed equity probably i can look at it uh, like uh, a different version of a swap itself apart from see here also a and b are getting into an agreement a may say that i would be paying you a fixed interest rate of let's say eight percent whereas b may say i'll be uh, giving you uh, the the total returns that come on nifty index whatever the nifty index comes whatever the return on the nifty index comes i would be paying you that much but at the same time there could be a guaranteed minimum this is a kind of an option and additional stuff coming up which is an option in general in case the value goes down in case the equity value in case the return on nifty is negative i may because of this option i may still give a zero percent instead of giving minus five percent it may be saying that it will give zero percent which means it's a kind of uh, an option that is blended with respect to the swap so even these kind of products guaranteed equity guaranteed annuity the insurance sector is uh, using these kind of products very uh, heavily uh, uh, blending up their uh, insurance uh, payments with respect to uh, these uh, or annuity payments with respect to the usage of the options as well then we could also see another uh, uh, another most uh, prominent instruments that are more uh, frequently available uh, on the over the counter which are structured notes they are majorly the non standard securities which are created by the financial uh, intermediaries or investment banks where they try to target where the instrument that they are creating would try to address a particular risk they are uh, they are uh, doing a creation of a product which will handle a particular which will cater to their particular risk and return requirement so they will understand the needs of the uh, of the customers investors based on them they are trying to design a product which will meet the risk and the return requirements associated with that most of the times they try to uh, uh, take a product where the options are embedded into them so that the payments can be made in some pre specified manner so probably if i have to look at a normal bond if i am issuing a normal bond what i see is the coupons are paid at regular intervals and the principal is paid on a maturity but if this particular bond is blended with option for the bond seller and what this option will say if the option seller wishes he can extend the period of the bond or he can reduce the period of the an additional option being provided where he can extend or reduce the period of the bond or similarly we could uh, say okay there is a bond if it is a regular here we could uh, create one more uh, mechanism on the top of this bond we talk about the coupons instead of pre deciding the coupons we say the coupons are linked to some kind of an index probably uh, i am linking these uh, coupons to uh, a property uh, index or i am linking this uh, to uh, an equity index or an exchange rate index whatever it is the coupons are linked to that particular index now for a person who has purchased that bond he is getting an exposure to that particular market the exchange rate market or the index market 
Whereas for the person who has sold, sold it, for the company who has sold that particular bond, it is hedging the currency risk. Because the coupon payments are more linked with uh, the, the, the exchange rate. So it is able to hedge the currency risk. So in, in some cases what is uh, happening is without entering into the derivatives market, this particular party is able to mitigate its currency risk whereas the other party is able to gain an exposure to the currency risk. So these are the different kinds of structured notes that are uh, tailor-made to the needs of the different clients which are also created by the investment banks and various other uh, firms either to reduce their risk or to gain exposure to some of the products as well. All right. So this is a broad high level overview of the different uh, instruments uh, that get traded in the over the counter markets and basic an understanding of the OTC markets. If you have any further queries regarding the same, you can very well get back to me by giving me a call on the number that I have provided below or you can even send in an email at uh, vamsizar at pacegurus.com. Thanks a lot for uh, listening to this uh, session. Thank you very much.